So let's take a bit of a deeper look at session view and some of the functions we can use to make some really interesting things happen as we're jamming in the session view of Ableton Live. So there are some really useful symbols and indicators in the progress field underneath a clip once we trigger it, and that's in each channel. So you'll notice that here beneath in this section. So if I just trigger this, I've soloed this little keys loop. So the pie chart here is corresponding to the clip that I'm triggering here. And you can see that as it elapses in its duration, the pie chart moves around. Now back around. To the right of it, that is the length of the clip, so 16. To the left of it, it will tell me how many times the clip has played in this particular session of playing. Now, I've just stopped playing here, and as I start again, it's gone back to one. But you see the pie chart will elapse, and it's gone round once, so now we're on the second play. And you see how it's moved to two. And it's telling us that for each of these here. You'll notice that to the left of it, this clip here, is shorter, which means that every time this goes round, this is playing far more times. So as I'm keeping track on a, on something that I'm playing in particular, so if I'm playing live, I can see how many times round we've gone, which will give me an idea, if I'm using this, of how many times this section has gone on for. So it's a really helpful way of just keeping track on what's been looping too much. And also, if you are live jamming and you see that this has gone up to like 32 repetitions, it might be something to consider to drop it out for a little bit. So it's a nice way of actually also monitoring your performance and how repetitive certain parts are. So a pie chart without numbers appears in the track status field for any group track. So if I group these by highlighting them and grouping them, you'll see here that there's this pie chart without any numbers. So it's showing me that something is playing within it, but it's not giving me feedback on it. It's just a basic indicator that something is being triggered within this group. So I'm just going to ungroup these because I don't need that for now. That was just to show you that sometimes you'll have those and they will be grey because it's a group. So if the track is playing clips from the arrangement view, a miniature display will represent the arrangement clip being played as it appears and as we pass it. So if we are going for it here, It should show us, there we go, we can see that it's a sort of mini version of the playback header that's showing that we're moving past that, so there we go. It's now triggering that independently to the actual session clips here, and as that passes I can go back into using session view. So it's a nice way of um, flipping in between the two, things that are sitting statically in the arrangement view in comparison to things that are being played on the fly in session view. If you're needing to know what your input is on each channel, you'll notice that if you move your monitor mode to in rather than auto, it will indicate here by either a keyboard or a microphone of what the input is. So the keyboard represents a MIDI input and the microphone here represents an audio input. So let's take a look at some launch controls within Session View. The launch controls can be found here when we actually click on the clip itself. Remember these belong to the clip individually. And everything that we are going to look at in this is going to correspond to everything within this track or this channel. But for now, if we open up this track, this drum groove I've got here, we can go down here and open up this sidebar which shows us the launch actions. As it's not lit up, it means that it's not functioning in that sense. And we just need to toggle on follow action and then we can start to play around with some of the launch clip behaviors. So what are the different launch modes we can use here? Down here under the word launch, we have a drop down menu so we can choose some different modes. We have trigger, gate, toggle, and repeat. These modes are going to determine how the clip or how the launching of the clip behaves with respect to mouse clips, computer keyboard actions, or MIDI notes. So basically anything that's controlling your incoming. So I could be clicking on it, or I could be using it, it could be controlled by a MIDI controller or the push, whichever. This launch section is going to determine how it behaves once triggered or untriggered or let go of. So the trigger mode is the default. It's clean and classic and it triggers the clip and lets it loop as long as it's set to loop, which we can see that it is above. So it's important to remember this in relation to what's actually going on with the clip itself. This is highlighted as looping, which means that as long as it's triggered, it will loop. The clip is only going to listen to one command, which is go. 
which is just being activated and off it goes behaving as it's been told to, which is in a loop. No other commands once it's been triggered are going to mess with it or alter things, which is not the case for some of the other modes. So when set to trigger, we trigger it once, and this loop is going to continue onwards. Nothing else I do is going to affect it, it's just going to keep going like this. Unless I turn it off, remember, using one of the empty slots below. So back on. If I set it to gate, there's a slightly different behavior that's going to go on. So downwards click starts the clip, but upwards will stop it. So I've got to hold the play button down for it to make any sound, and then releasing it will stop it. So if I hold it down, and I let it go. It's important for you to notice something, that every time we trigger this clip, it's going to be still tethered to the global behavior. The global behavior is dictated up here, so by one bar, which is the default, or you can use it by half a bar, two bars, whichever, but it means that it's going to trigger the next motion or the next action in time with the track. So if I let go at a random time that isn't on beat, it's still going to make sure that it's in certain timing. So it's going to count properly at 11450, which is what we're at in the BPM here. It's going to make sure that it's nice and clean on or off the beat, which is really helpful when we're playing live because it means that nothing jarring is going to happen and nothing arrhythmic is going to happen unless we wish it to. Moving on to the toggle mode. Down starts the clip and up is ignored. So when I let go, so down meaning clicking down on the mouse, even when I click up, it's going to keep going. But when I press again, the clip will stop. So it's almost like activating it and deactivating it. So I click it on and I can let go and it will play. If I click it again, it will stop. And again, that has rounded it up to the nearest beep, so nice and clean. Repeat mode is very different to the others in that when I hold down on it, so clicking downwards on the mouse or holding the key, whichever way that I'm triggering this in particular, the clip is going to be triggered repeatedly at the clip's individual quantization rate. So holding down on play is going to make the loop start again and again. So I'll hold it down. Nice. So that's going at one bar intervals. And why is it going at one bar intervals, we ask ourselves? Because we're at one bar in the global quantization. But down here, if I change the quantization, I can change it to something less. If I want something a bit glitchier going on, watch what happens when I hold it down. Nice. And really pleasantly, it just carries on through the sample once I let go. I can change it to a smaller division. Or we can start to mess around with some triplets. Nice. So it's a really nice, playful way of being able to actually play these clips more instrumentally, as it were. So I'm just pressing spacebar to stop. To the right of the launch mode, we have legato. Legato is super important when it comes to the performance side of things and definitely crucial when you're using this as a live performance mode. When we select legato, it enables us to move about between loops. So for example, if we can just, I'm just gonna make some of these a bit smaller, but let's focus on this drum channel here. I have these different colored clips because it's the same loop, but I've made some different variations of it. The reason I've done this is because I would sometimes use this not just in a live sense, but also in a way of generating some really interesting new beats and using what we're going to call follow actions and using different launch modes to make Ableton Live move through these different patterns, maybe randomly, maybe in a very specific way, to create something new or create something interesting made of fragments of lots of different clips. We start off with our original one, which is lit up with follow actions. And remember, these others have not yet been edited, so they don't have follow actions yet, but we'll look into this. So legato mode will control how smoothly these move into one another. Now, ideally, I need to now highlight follow action legato on everything so that everything that happens after the clip we're looking at is happening smoothly. You may have noticed that as soon as I highlight follow actions and activate them in each of these clips, you may notice that the arrows where we launched them have changed. So we have a solid arrow here on something that doesn't have follow actions, but to the right on these ones, we have this kind of chopped fragmented version of the play symbol. 
So this is a nice visual aid to show us what in this particular project has and hasn't been activated in some of the different launch modes. It's a really nice way of being able to monitor what's going on there. The way Legato mode works is that if I didn't have it on, every time I triggered a new clip, it would start back from the beginning. But what's gonna happen now is, when the playback header gets to the second bar and I trigger it, it's going to carry on from there, so it carries on from where it's left off. So we start off this groove, I start the next one, which starts from the second there, and then I trigger it again, and it waits and starts from the fourth. So wherever you've got up to in the particular loop, it will take over from that rather than waiting until the end of the entire loop and then starting again. So we can actually really start to create some interesting variations because it's following in the same pattern, but it's not always going back to the beginning of everything all the time. So legato mode is a great way of toggling between these without losing the synced flow of your project's BPM. So even if we turn on certain clips, our global quantize off entirely, it's still going to be in a nice rhythmic flow no matter what. So it's something to safeguard what you're doing as you go along. So legato mode's always got your back when it comes to the actual um, consistency of the rhythmic flow of what you're playing. There's a few nice little shortcuts if you're wanting to toggle between the different quantizations, so from global to non to eight bars, etc. So as I click on this particular clip, we can actually toggle really quickly using command seven, eight, nine, or zero to toggle through. And if you look at the top in the quantization section here, I can move through these like this, just using it really quickly. So that's a nice way of just doing it on the fly if you're in the middle of performing.